Welcome to my friends erotic stories podcast, where we listen to the best erotica from our friends online. Relax as you spice up your day to day lives with a little bit of naughtiness. Search for my friends erotic stories on Apple podcast, Spotify, Google podcast and more. Also visit us on our slash erotic podcast and help us make our podcast better. Because there was a lot of imposters in the fight industry, and I'm starting to live in a world where Jake Paul might be an actually good boxer, which means it's time for Verbal Tap. Show that proves fighting way easier when you're not engaged with a YouTube star. I'm your host, Kevin, with me, of course, Raph Asparza, and groaning a punching expert. But we'll, we'll get to him, Raph. His credentials are impressive. Raph, how are you? Have you recovered from whatever that was yet? Oh, I'm on cloud nine because a douchebag got knocked out. And now I don't know that anybody really wanted a YouTuber named Jake Paul to win. But I also got to see Ben Askren get knocked out, which uh, it's a tough one here. And I noticed that you said a better boxer than was led to believe. So I think we have to put an asterisk next to that because they picked the person who has the worst striking in all of MMA. So we've had people who have been defending Ben Askren's honor, saying things like, don't pick on Ben, which we will. But then they're saying things that are absurd that are like, oh, I don't know that he's the worst hands in boxing. Mm, 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 I don't know about that. And yet here we are. So anyway, why don't we ask the guest who is all grown mere mention of this weekend's fights. Normally the guest does not groan at any mention of anything in the introduction. But here we are. Let's introduce friend of the show, one gifted Gabe Green. Gabe, how are you, sir? Man, I'm doing good. Thank you for, you know, thanks for inviting me on. Well, you know, we want to bring you on after you won uh, the last time. And you've been busy and, you know, things come up and you're still busy now, but you were kind enough to make some time uh, to chat with us. Let's get to it. Why the groan? Were you sad over the weekend for some reason? Uh, you know, it's just I, I wanted Ben to win. I did. I was like, same. you know, like, like, just do this for us. It's, it's more than just you right now. And and he failed us. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Don't put that on us. Do not put that on us. From minute one, when this was mentioned, I said he does not represent us. And now you may notice something, which is that we get people like BJ Penn going, hey, bro, um, I would like to throw my hat into this one, too. And we go, no. So maybe I'm going to throw a question at you. I want you to think about it. I know it's hard to really get this one off the top of the cuff, but think about this one. I propose that we have a high council of MMA who elects someone because all of these people see that paycheck. <laughs> we're that just, we're just pick a champion. That, that uh, I think. Cool. I think what we need to do is is if someone is legitimately going to defend MMA's honor, we should have a panel at least to qualify who that person is because otherwise we're going to get Dylan Dennis representing our honor. And I got news for you. If you thought this was a real rock in a hard place with Ben Askren and Jake Paul, it's going to get much worse and much dumber. Yeah. His, his stand up is terrible too. <laughs> <laughs> but Gabe, who would you put on that council? Like who would you trust to come up with the people that should fight? Jake Paul. I mean, I think I think we should go. Just you know, I think we should we should just have them all be like Hall of Famers. You know, people okay. people that have already earned our respect. You know, not necessarily UFC Hall of Famers, but MMA legends in general. You know, because they they got the the best interest of uh, the MMA community. You know, already. So I would say it just should just be that. That's how you get in. Or that's, Kevin, that's how you're in the, in the inner circle. I feel that. Kevin, is there anybody that jumps out in your head who should defend MMA's honor after this weekend? 
GSP is my first and easiest answer. I feel like if GSP Khabib finally came together on something that they then had to like explain, this would be it. Because I do think there's a chance here to, I don't know if in the beginning of the movie Achilles, wait, I guess it was Troy starring Brad Pitt. It was okay. Mm -hmm. That's assuming I'm assuming that's who Gabe is uh, shaping his ab game after would be Brad Pitt in that movie. (laughs) But there's a beginning scene where it's like, let's just have your best versus our best. I don't know if that's rooted in history, haven't done the legwork, but that would be mm-hmm. kind of cool for us in this situation. Because I'm with, I felt let down myself. It, it wasn't the knockout necessarily. It was the quickness of the knockout mm-hmm. that, that hurt, that took my breath away. And just... Cheering for Ben Askren was already a pretty deep exercise in cognitive dissonance that now I find mm-hmm. myself extremely confused by why he couldn't put up a better fight. I just thought he would, MMA-wise. This brings me to my point, which is if you are disappointed, it's kind of on you for believing in Ben Askren and his hands. So Us. Really um, just, there's uh, a community. <laughs> we'll start a support group. You know what it was, just... though? He... uh I, I didn't I I didn't think he was gonna um I was just hoping he was gonna do better, you know? And then and then he went on and he did the the little like pre, uh press conference, like a workout press workout thing and he was actually throwing decent combinations. And I don't know if they're actually decent combinations or just, you know, like relatively relatively decent combinations because of what I, I was expecting from him. But I was like, it gave me a false sense of like confidence in him. And I was like, hey, you know what? Look at him. He's actually throwing some shit. You might, you might do good. And then, I, I, you know, I was just hoping for him to do good. And then in the very beginning, he actually surprised me. Uh, Paul throws like a right hand and – I don't know if it landed because of the camera angle, but it looked like Askren rolled it and then threw like a counter right hand and it hit him. And I was like, holy shit, look, he did boxing. That That's that's exactly what you're supposed to do. And then like 10 seconds later, he got knocked out. And I was like, oh, well, never mind. You know, it, was, it, it, it looked like it started off pretty solid. I was like, whoa, look, that yeah, that's, that's boxing. He's doing boxing. Nice. And then And then it was over. Gabe, I got to tell you, I there are, are no limits to the amount of people who have ever said that about me anytime I try to throw a combination in boxing. So <laughs> I, I will say that that rings very true to me. I'm going to ask you another question here, Gabe, and I don't want to get you in trouble, but the internet is a buzz in saying this was a fixed fight. Give me a percentage of how much you believe this was a fixed fight. Uh, it's probably like fifty-fifty. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not okay. leaning towards either way. I could see. I could see that it could be, but I mean, I could see Askren just actually sucking as being a very high possibility too. You know. So yeah, I'm. I'm gonna say solid fifty-fifty. It makes sense. Yeah. You know, being boxing. You know, boxing has a history of kind of you know the politics behind boxing and you know fights. You know, not or, you know, being play people paying to win. So, I could, you know, I could kind of see that angle for sure. It looks a lot better if he wins now and then fights somebody else and then beats that guy too. But like he's trying to call out Diaz, right? Oh, that's so, my dream fight. That's all I, no, I want I, now because I said – Diaz, Diaz kills him. I, Diaz will outbox the shit out of him for sure. But, and Diaz fits that nice niche of what else is he doing? Well, also, the amount of shit talk that would happen inside of that ring, I would re- require both of them to have a mic just taped uh, to their chest so we could hear yeah. all of the mumblings from Diaz in between rounds being like, yeah, what's up, bitch? I'm not bad. I swear now. You, you can't even buy that shit. You call that a combo? Uh... <laughs> the press would be pretty good for that. Plus, if Snoop started smoking weed... You know, Nate, he wouldn't be able to walk past it. He'd be like, "Well, I'm just gonna swing yeah. by real quick. This isn't a real fight anyway," <laughs> which would be great. <laughs> Let me just point this room. out, though. Exactly. <laughs> Let me just point this out, which is this, and this is the reason why I want to shoot down the 50 percent that believes this could have been fixed, which is this simple idea: 
if you're going to pay someone to take a dive so that you gain credibility as a boxer, you're not going to pick Ben Askren just flat out. That does not get you credibility as a boxer that gets you credibility as the winner of a circus show. Kevin, did you hear any of the commentary or did you get word back about Oscar De La Hoya? No, I didn't. All I saw was the uh, Pete Davidson confronts one, whichever Paul it was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, how was Oscar? Say, Why, they let Oscar oh, on the mic? Oh, oh. A little surprised. They did. And Gabe, did you hear any of Oscar's commentary? It, I, he was drunk, right? I, it, it, it was kind of, I don't know. I didn't even know what he was saying. It just didn't sound like he was all there. I was like, what? Good news. What is- he didn't know what he was saying either. And yeah. it was yeah. the internet saying he was either on lots of cocaine or alcohol. Then there was a very depressed yeah. moment of, oh, are we doing this? No, that's not, not good. I think he has substance issues. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he's definitely going through some shit right now. But don't worry, he wants to fight Eddie Alvarez, allegedly. So you know what though? I what I'm in the what's up? I saw him in the ring moving around in a little IG clip, and he didn't look too bad for being an old guy. You know, like I was like, oh look, he still he still moves. He can still move. Hold on, I want to ask so, you. I mean, you're a you're a fighter. You mentioned that's the second time you've mentioned seeing someone. I'm curious in your illustrious record. Dating back to the several times you visited knockout promotions, has there been someone that you were like, this guy looks insane, and then you just beat the shit out of him? Has it happened multiple times, or is there at least one that stands out? Uh, where like you're just like this, this guy looks like he's uh like a like a savage, and then he turns out to not be a savage. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, my junior year, there was this six foot four D one prospect that came to town, and we were like, oh shit. Yeah, except he couldn't dribble past us and was uncoordinated. It was like, uh, and we just beat him by thirty. And it was like, well, I guess I worried for nothing. Curious if that's happened. Um, I mean, not. I mean, not not really to me. I, I've never looked at or match, been matched up someone who's just kind of been, you know, fucking a killer, and then then not. Well, I mean, I usually win, but. I don't. I don't think. I think. I just don't be scared of people, so I don't even look at them in that in that kind of manner. I'm like, oh, look, that's a human. I'm human. I'm gonna beat this human. You know. I don't really get when I'm sizing up people. I'm just like, yeah, he fucking breathes like me. He bleeds like me. So so yeah, nothing to worry about here. Well, I'll tell Richard Leroy that you don't like his IG clips and you were unimpressed. I'm taking it away, Raf. Uh, yeah, of all people, we're going to go and report back to a uh, friend of the show. Rich is going to get real pissed about that. No, I mean, the fun part about that is, is in fact, of all the fights that I know in particular, there is a kindness that I saw with you and Rich. Now, I guess we transition to why you're here. You're going to take on Kevin's UFC 261 pay-per-view picks. I usually pick people who are really good at trash talking to come on this. Now, I don't know what your record is as a trash talker because I know you more as a guy who was super nice to Rich, brought him a cookie at a weigh-in. Yeah, then, I did. hilariously, really and I buddies, really have yeah. to make sure. What's that? I said we kind of became best buddies. Leroy's the homie. Super, super awesome Dude, guy. You guys are both amazing people, and it's one of those things where you're going – Oh, they have to fight? I thought they were going to hang out. Okay. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. All right. Having said that, the last fight you had, your opponent, his nickname is Philly Fresh. And what did you do at the weigh-in when you had the face-off? You know what? You want to hear the story behind this. Um, I see him before weigh-in, and I'm extremely friendly, so you know I go and talk to him. I'm like, I know we're about to beat each other up, but, you know, like, hey, how you doing? And um, I'm like, dude, you're the Fresh Prince. Let's do the whole slap thing that Will Smith and Jazzy uh, Jeff always do. And he looks at me. He's like, hey, man, that would be really cool. I was like, yeah, you know, you know, it's fun for the fans. It's a throwback. It works completely for you. Like, I think that would be great for you. And he was like, oh, yeah, we'll do it. I'm like, all right, cool. 
<laughs> so we both, you know, we line up for a shit and everything. He goes out first. I go out second. Um, they introduce us. We could do our face-offs. We come forward. You know, like, we didn't practice it because, I mean, there's nothing to practice, right? But I come walking up. I put my hand out to let him know I just, I'm going for the handshake thing. And then I we go like that. And when I pull back to do the whole thing, I, like, look at him through the corner of my eye, him not moving and me being the only one who does it, you know? So I'm just like, and and he just he just stood right there looking at me. And, um, I mean, it was cool. It was whatever. <laughs> so a lot of people thought it was funny so that I did it. But he was totally supposed to do it, too. It was like, uh, I think Dana White even heard me because I was, as I was, like, rocking back to do the psh thing uh, before i said psh, i was like are we not doing this and like i like like rolled back it was funny yeah i was like all right that's cool and then um we like walk around the stage and we, we're we're leaving and he's like hey man you know we say we got to be serious we're gonna fight tomorrow you know i was like okay okay <laughs> whatever <laughs> and Holy i want to point out two things about this <laughs> The first thing is Kevin and I as comedians can relate to committing to a joke that a dance partner does not commit back on and then looking around and going, well, okay, guess that's what I have to deal with now. And two, this is the thing that I want Kevin to pay attention to. Number two, Kevin, is that when Gabe had the opportunity to murk this guy in his post, uh, you know, I just didn't want to beat him up too bad because he's a nice guy and he's got a good family. And I just, I, I couldn't do that. And I was like, oh my God, Gabe, <laughs> you're so nice. I just wonder if you're going to be this nice to Kevin. So tell me this, are you somebody who ever talks trash? And if so, are you good at it? You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like a super big, I never start talking trash, but, um, I come from a family that you need to have thick skin with and we're all pretty witty and stuff like that. So I think I'll be okay. You know, Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be fun. See, I, he's already trying to get me off my game. He didn't bring me a cookie, but he brought me kindness. I can hear it. (laughs) Wait, did he bring me a cookie? I'm, I look around yeah, anxiously. Not to my knowledge, no. It'll be there, please. Because I can be bought. So you're over, <laughs> you're over on the East Coast right now. What are you doing out there, bud? Uh, my my friend uh, is the, he's not even officially fighting. He's the alternate in the PFL tournament. So they're making him be ready for the fight and making weight in case anything happens to any of the other people to fight. So we're just training every day making sure he stays sharp. And I mean, it's cool because he's, he's getting paid just to be the alternate, you know? Um, so I was like, yeah, uh, he didn't have any corners to come out. Usually uh, like our head coach, Tracy Hess would come out, but he was going through some stuff. So he wasn't able to, he wasn't able to make it the trip, especially to be out here for a uh, freaking, 17 days they want us because of quarantine and everything that we have to be at the hotel so yeah it, it's hard for anybody to just mix 17 days of work you know so luckily my schedule stays pretty open sometimes and um i was like yeah as long as i can work out and train here that's that's all i really need to do so i got you well are you in florida then uh no we're in uh new jersey they're fighting at in atlantic city Okay, I'm sorry. Next card, I'm on the I'm on the wrong card. Do you, you have to quarantine just to go be in the camp. Uh, so they make their uh, the first two days we get here, we're uh, limited to just the hotel room, and we're just you know kicking in the hotel in the in the room. We can't go anywhere. After your two days are up, you're allowed to go um, to the elevator, which takes you to the gym. And then there's uh, on a the floor above that there's a like mats there's a bunch of like meeting rooms that are like matted up so you can roll around and do all that stuff. Uh, and then there's one balcony where you can actually go outside and feel fresh air. But that's it. Those are the places you can go. Then you can go back to your room. That, that's that's it. And I think there's a curfew, but you know whatever. How different yeah. is that from your normal routine? Or at this point, 
you fought for all the fight companies. Is there a normal routine? I'm curious. Um, I mean, just COVID's made everything a lot, a, a lot different with uh, not being able. If like I was able to actually leave the hotel and like, because we're right next to the beach, and just put like my sand, my my toes in the sand, that would make this stay dramatically better. So it just sucks that you're like super stuck inside. But um, I mean, all I usually do is train all day, so that's not much of a difference. It it, it, it simplified my life really because I don't to have to drive anywhere. I just downstairs and train and then come back up. Okay. I'd be friends with other people training and I just joined their, their fight prep week stuff. I'm like, Hey, you guys need an extra body? Yeah. I'll spar with you guys. Just hold on. <laughs> Hit me up on IG. I got you guys. That doesn't Make tire you down. Today. You've been at this. I'm trying nah. to count your fights over here. Do you just not get injured or slower? What's your recovery? How do you do that? I mean, I get injured. So I actually was injured. I had to take two years off because of injury. But besides that, you know, I was fighting like damn near five times a year. Uh, but then I, I took two years off. That sucked. I had to uh, fix my hand, fix the shoulder. And then, um, yeah, then when I got back into fighting, COVID was going on. And it's just it's it's kind of weird. Everything's kind of weird. I came back into a re- a very weird world. Yeah, that's fascinating. And you don't even consider it in terms of just being able to go walk and put your feet in the sand. But I guess that's uh... no. Yeah, it's like it's giant. Like you're like, I I like watch the there's a there's a pier like right out my window, and I'm like watching people on the Ferris wheel go around, and I'm like, look at these people with freedom. <laughs> I, remember, oh, I remember freedom. You know, like so sad. <laughs> this is where, like, I want to do that Keanu Reeves. Like, are they really free, brother? You're fighting for a living, <laughs> doing what you want. You don't know. Maybe they're at the grind. Uh, you could ignore me. I've had a little too much to drink. It's blizzarding in Colorado. What? Who do you fight next? Do you have yours lined up? Is it there yet? You you fought on UFC 258, which will become important here this evening because you have a little insider knowledge, I think. But uh, what's on the horizon? Um, they because I, I had eye surgery a couple a month ago, a Jeez. month ago, like yesterday. Because I've been fighting p- pretty blind, so I had a PRK. They like shaved down my eyeballs and took out all the. Like, I got. I don't need glasses anymore. My stigmatism is gone, so that's cool. Now I actually have depth perception, which is pretty important when you're fighting people. Um, so yeah, that's uh. I like just got kind of like okay to start uh, moving around with people and rolling and doing that kind of stuff. So, uh, we're hoping sometime in July is, is when I'll be able to. Like, you know, really get back into things and, and get a camp and then be ready for a fight. So, for, no, for, nobody in particular, but July. For those not familiar, PRK is a form of lace. Well, it's like the alternative to lace it, considered safer. And if you don't understand that, but you've seen the movie Major League, when Charlie Sheen's character gets glasses, that's like the 90s version of this. You're saying you're, you might, do you feel, okay, how long have you been able to see while sparring? I'm, do you see a dif- Do you feel a difference? Oh, I, I mean, I haven't really sparred. Sparred. I've just kind of uh, rolled around. I have, haven't had punches been thrown at me. But I can tell you one thing: um, before, because of how bad my depth perception was, as I walked through the world, I kind of just floated through space, and I really couldn't tell how far things were from my face. That's like my depth perception is really. Bad. And then now. I'm like walking through a hallway and I'm like, holy shit, that wall is like really close to me. And I like move to the side a little bit. So <laughs> I, can only, I can only imagine like, I would like bump into shit a lot, you know, as I'm walking through places like, Oh fuck, that was next to me. But now I'm like, Oh snap, like, it's next to me and I move out of the way. So yeah, I can only imagine how it's going to transfer into one, po- like pairing stuff. Like I've done some mitt work, but I haven't actually like sparred, sparred yet. Um, yeah. Just, just kind of rolled around. So, yeah, I mean, Kevin, probably... this 
does kind of explain why when I've seen him fight before, there was a whole 30 seconds where he was trying to attack the ref and people were like, wait, no, no, just let's not do that. That's the wrong guy. He's concussed. It's like, no, he won. Oh, wait, <laughs> why is he hitting the ref? It's like, look, he told you when he went in there. That's crazy. So look out, fight world. Give- You've either got a more gifted Gabe Green or he won't even – I don't know. I don't think you go the other way. I mean, it would be funny. i got to tell you this, Gabe. As, as somebody who wears glasses, when I do striking and I have somebody throwing, like, something at me, I always look at them and they're like, oh, hey, yeah, you took a second. Like, what's up? But I was like, my depth perception is not your depth perception. That is why I yeah. do not fight. I do not have this as a skill. So I'm always telling people, I'm like, yeah, no, I know my recognition of a not skill for that. So I'm so happy to see what that's going to be like for you going forward. Having said that, we're about to transition to the game. It is important that if you are going to talk to trash to Kevin, that you have an opportunity to know something or ask Kevin a few questions that might help you be informed, almost as if you were making fun of a family member. Do you have any questions for Kevin that might give you a better sense of things to make fun of about him? I mean, I don't, what's, what's, uh, do you train at all, Kevin? You know, I do. And as someone who recently <laughs> took a sabbatical for surgeries, uh, part three, yes, I am a lifelong purple belt Brazilian jiu-jitsu with uh, enough Muay Thai to get seriously injured if I'm trying to impress someone. Okay. I mean, I, that, you ever had an actual fight? No. I, no, not with uh, exchanges, grappling tournaments, and upbringing in rural Kansas, those types of fights. I have never locked an octagon behind me. Mm. I mean, that's, that's, that's all I really need to know. That, that's yeah. just... He's, oh uh, shit! That was quick. <laughs> all right, that was the qu- quickest cross examination I think we've ever had. Which, all right, let's do it. Let's transition to the game of over under Kevin. And now it's time for the thrilling installment of over Kevin. Kevin. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, check this out. This a part of the show that I host. It's called Over Under Kevin. It's a segment of the show where we do our fight predictions for upcoming pay-per-views. Yes, we do the entire card, but we do it out of order. Each participant is given 15 seconds to say who they think is going to win. And if I so deem it, I will give their opponent 15 seconds for rebuttal time. Now, while technically the person who gets the most picks correct wins, the person who wins the crowd is usually the person who talks the most amount of trash. Kevin, do you understand the rules? I already forgot who I was playing against. It's a color mm. for a last name. Um, Gabe mm. Blue? Gabe Fuchsia? No, no. I, I should mm. write I'll write it down when you say it next. Okay. It, Thank it, you, Kevin. It, it's Gabe Green. It's Gabe Green. It's Gabe Green. Um, you're going to know. It's going to be like a worldwide name household, but, but don't worry about it right now. It, it'll come <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Kevin, he has trended a couple times with some really fucking uh, great uh, fight finishes. Well, Gabe, do you understand the rules? Uh, so, so are we just like picking whatever person we want and then, you know, like to, to add any fight? Because you said it was out of order. Just so like, well, I will do them out of order. So I'm going to essentially what the way it ha- happens is I'm going to prompt you and then I'm going to give you 15 seconds to say who is going to win that fight. So them's uh, the rules. Uh, Does that make sense to you, sir? Yes, 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 sir. Beautiful. Well, Kevin, I'm going to start with you. We're starting in the lightweight division. Kazula Vargas, which I'm not concerned at all as a name, is taking on Wrong Zoo. Kevin, who do you have? What's a right zoo with you, Raph, before I I couldn't? I don't know. I have to go with Wrong. And just so the world is aware, I named my team Not Cookie Enough. And I named his the 2020 kid. So that's, uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to start mm-hmm. mine off with some wrong Al Zool. Okay. Uh, Green, who do you got on this one, sir? Yeah, I mean, I got I got wrong too, because I figured that's his last name. And, um, you know, that's already an L, so he's probably pretty fired up for a dub. 
<laughs> that's, that's Kevin, the right. he's trying to be, would you, you know he's trying to be the right guy. <laughs> Kevin, when you see two names like this, do you feel that the UFC just puts some names in a blender and sees what happens? Well, there's how many Z's? What's the over under on Z's in a name for a fight? Because we have two. Kazula Vargas versus the wrong zoo. And I would name my, my nickname would just be the, so they had to yell the wrong zoo. And it is with an R, which is going to really confuse people as you're trying to explain it. I, I'm amazed at the amount of Z's in this fight. And we're not even to <laughs> some, Kazula is a fucking great name. I almost want to switch, but wrong's better. It is. It is. Uh, I'm having a again. child. I'll put Kazula on the list. Wife. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, let me ask this, Gabe. I'd like to know, we're not going to talk about someone's actual name, but is there a nickname that you've ever heard for a fighter that you thought, that's a terrible nickname? That's terrible. I don't like the pretty, like when someone's nickname is Pretty Boy or something like that, or like Pretty, I'm like, why? You're a fighter, you know? That's, that's just what always throws me off. <laughs> Do you like somebody to be maybe nicknamed the average looking Joe? Uh, or See, is there something better to that? Or do you just feel like that's something I could get behind? If someone was like average Joe Schmo, you know, like McGillicuddy, that'd be B. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to keep this party going. A middleweight bout between Carl Robertson and Brendan Allen. Gabe, you got this one first. <sighs> Uh, I'm gonna go Robertson. Okay. Okay. All right, Kev. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to go. 15 seconds on the clock for you. First off, I don't like it when people's nickname brag about what classes they took in high school. Gifted Gabe. I don't care if you took AP algebra. <laughs> Good for you. I like someone who's like, you know, I'm not that smart, no, but, but they call me handsome Kevin. <laughs> I am going with Alan. <laughs> Just for the record. Gabe, I'm going to ask you a question here. You took a real deep sigh and big breath on this one. Are you doing okay? Do you need a moment? Should we give you a few moments to do some breathing exercises? Kevin's been watching some Wim Hof videos, and I'm sure that could be very helpful. No, 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 no. I just, you know, this one, this one I wasn't too sure about. Uh, but, you know, I watched some film on both of them, and I just, I'm leaning toward Carl. You know, Carl with a K, that's a man who's determined, and um, I think he's going to get it. All right. Kevin, are you sensing a little bit of nervousness that he's doing that deep breath almost as if he's in a third round and you don't know which way it's going to go and you hear DC saying that he's losing a fight that he's actually winning? Yeah, just like Alan's tattoo artist. I'm white knuckling it. I can hear it. I can hear that same <laughs> fear that whatever they did to Alan's shoulder is what's going to happen to um, Gabe's picks. Fair enough. Kevin, I've got a pick for you that you need to make, and that fight is Uriah Hall versus Chris Weidman. Go. First of all, Tough 17 alum. Can mm -hmm. I get a shout-out for the no. Uriah Hall, who maintains – I don't – this fight is minus 110 for both of them, for, for he and Mr. Weidman. I don't understand that. Weidman's another year older, another year in a different place. I'm going with Uriah Hall, the back kick kid. That's definitely not his nickname. Okay. <laughs> Gabe, what do you got for us? I'm also going with Uriah. It seemed like Weidman's like, I don't know. I wasn't impressed with his last performance. Um, yeah, I I don't see him winning. I know, he, and then you know he already won once before. Uriah doesn't. He, he's trying to avenge that, and uh, I liked how he did a lot better. Um, I liked his last performance compared to Weidman, so definitely Uriah. I can get behind that. I feel like maybe a few years ago, you might even feel like given an edge to Weidman at some point, but I don't like the trajectory that Weidman's been on lately because it's too spotty to bet on. Pulling up FanDuel now. I got to get some money on this one before uh, it changes. So, <laughs> Phil! <laughs> um, I'm going to go on with the next fight. It's a women's strawweight bout. And Gabe, you're going to start us off on this one. It's Na Liang versus Ariane Carnita Losi. Carne Losi. There you go. 
Hmm. I'm gonna go with with Leon Nay. What, what was her last name? Na, Nay, Na, Nay, Na, 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 Liang. Na Liang. Yeah, Na Liang. That's who I'm going with. Wow, this is getting confusing because yeah, they have her as Na Liang on Wikipedia and L Na in ESPN. <laughs> And I'm going to go oh, no. with Carnalossi. Um, practice that one. Plus, I'm going to try and uh, add a little bet on that one as well. Feel good about that. Just uh, her straight what is, up. What's the, what the feeling on why you want to bet on her, Kevin? Um, straight out of the gate, has a picture, and it is an <laughs> odds thing. So is this a good time to reveal, Kev, to Gabe, that in the past we have talked about him in the same way that we are doing for other fighters when he has been on, I don't know, say a UFC pay-per-view card? Except we were extremely respectful. You know mm-hmm. that. <laughs> mm-hmm. We were like, look at that guy. There was abs. not an accidental prompting. If he would just see an optometrist, he'd be the best ever. That's what we said. <laughs> because I will tell you this, Gabe. Normally, I tell people that Kevin picked against them. Because people have come on who have fought in the UFC. And there have been some tough discussions. Kevin has actually picked you previously. Does that make you feel oh. better? Or do you not care? It, you know what? Um, it just means that he... He's yeah. He, he's not dumb. He was he was right on that one. So that's cool. I, I'm glad you picked me. I, I'm glad. I, hopefully it was the one that I won. You know, I I didn't make you lose a pick. I'm actually trying to scroll Most back recently. to 258 just to see. I feel like he, I can go up and you find did him pretty pick quick. him, Kevin. Yes, yes, that was one that you picked him on. Yes, I did. I feel I'm just looking. <laughs> yeah, back to go. <laughs> I definitely looked that up because I go, we always broach the conversation and you'll see some fighters on the show get very quiet whenever I go, Kevin did not pick you. And they go, okay. Or we know that they're going to be on a future version of this and they go, okay. So you're going to pick against me now that I've been on the show. And I'm like, well, sometimes we have two people who've been on the show fighting each other. And then it's kind of dicey, dude. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's, hey, it, the way the way I see it is, um, you you know, I, him choosing me to win or not doesn't affect my performance or what I'm gonna do whatsoever. So it doesn't really bother me. You you can, you know, choose me or not. I'm still gonna win. So yeah, yeah. whatever. I noticed I was not mentioned in your thank you speech. It hurt just a little bit. But <laughs> what are you gonna do, dude? Yeah, I was. Oh my god. Uh, everyone told it was everyone's birthday. Everyone's like, "Give me a birthday." I'm like, "I've never heard yeah, that." Like, how can I've never heard that conundrum before. But that is kind of funny that people. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah, everybody was like, "Hey, it's my birthday." I'm like, "What the? Choose a different day to be born, man. This is too many." <laughs> I just laughed because I saw you doing that and I almost sent you a text that was like, dude, get on Cameo and make those people like pay you to do those birthday shout outs. Don't give that shit away for free, especially on network. Oh, yeah. I was just like, I remember I forgot someone and they're all like, oh, you didn't give me a birthday shout out. And I was like, <laughs> well, here, I was like, here's the thing. Um, have you ever have you ever been have you ever been in a fight? that people were watching and they were like, no, I was like, have you ever been in a fight in the UFC? And they're all like, no, I was like, have you ever won a fight in the UFC and then been interviewed by Joe Rogan who you've been, you know, watching since you were a young little kid. And they're all like, no, I was like, well, I can tell you right now, it's hard to remember everybody's name at that point. <laughs> so like, sorry, but I gave that, uh, I knew I forgot a bunch of people. So I just gave that like super umbrella, happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today at the very end to try to just cover my base. And, um, I mean, it worked. We were backstage and, uh, they were cutting off my hand wraps and the guy was like, Hey, thanks for the birthday shout out. I was like, Hey man, you're welcome. So, I mean, some people like, 
I will tell you, it was pretty endearing because there is a little bit. See, I don't worry about you guys as fighters fighting. But if I know you personally and you get to the interview stuff, that's when I worry. Like, that's me getting nervous. I don't get nervous about you in a cage. I get nervous about you being interviewed because that's my genre. And I immediately think, like, oh, fuck. Just land this baby bird. And when it looked like you almost weren't going to be interviewed and you didn't even make it to the interview with Joe at the very beginning, I go, no, no, Gabe, the other way. You know what, though? That wasn't even our our fault. We walked out of the cage, and they directed us the other way. All right, fighters, this way. So they're the ones who pulled us away from Joe, all right? It It was not our fault. The UFC coordinator people were like, this way, this way, this way. And then we started walking that way, and then they were like, oh, wait, no, no, that way, that way, that way. I was like, oh, shit, my bad. So that that wasn't maybe it. this, but I mean, is... it's funny. It made for a funny moment moment with Joe when, when I got there. So that's cool. It did, but it was highly concerning to me because I, I was watching that fight in my car driving, and I was literally in traffic, just screaming the other way. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> I had a moment, and then you made it there, and you made it very very uh, nice, and and you redeemed yourself. Anyway, let's get back to the fights. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna act actually put 23 seconds on the clock for this one and i believe on this one kevin you're going to start us off do you have in this women's strawweight championship bout zhang willie or rose nama Yunus? kevin you start us off 23 seconds go give me the zhang i don't see anything changing and uh you know one must evolve one's mind to evolve one's spirit it's an ancient Come. thing that I think I either heard on Highlander, Made Up, or one of the Seagal movies. I'm a little mm. worried about Rose, fellow Colorado. It seems like maybe she's regressing. Maybe she's hanging out with some people politically that are like, just keep punching, not like, <laughs> let's get some flexibility. I'm going with Zang. Okay. All right. Gabe, who do you have on this one? See, I'm going to go Rose. Not mm. because I think... Zang is amazing, and she honestly probably will win. However, I'm rooting for Rose, so I'm choose Rose. I think Rose is beast. I love her. She's. I just want her to win. So I don't. I'm not gonna put any negative to somebody else over over her. I'm, so I'm going Rose. She's. I, like, I do she's, like she's, that you're standing for her. Good for you. Yeah, she's very skilled um, in everything. She's I see Zang winning. Very skilled as a fighter. It's been a weird couple weeks press-wise for her because I go, are you making a heel turn? Also, this is confusing. I don't understand why any of this is happening with her in headlines in terms of why this is an angle we're choosing to go down, but here we are. I would tell you this. I'm going to ignore all that because it's really stupid, and I really wish that she read a book. But, or if she's going to base her personal experiences maybe have them on personal experiences. It's the funniest thing in the world to say, these feelings are based on my own personal beliefs that you can see on a YouTube video. And I go, oh God, no, that does not, that's not how that works. Okay. What I will tell you though is this, she's an amazing fighter. I think it's a tall order, at least for this particular opportunity. I lean more on the champion on this and it's not a a disparagement against uh, Rose's talent because she's a beast too. I just, I feel like that smart money is there. But that's just my opinion. Well, I've uh, already done it. Never mind, I'll talk about that bet in a few. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that one. But I got We're your eye go to our next fight. It's a- I got him. <laughs> you got him, good. Kev, you are going to hear Gabe tell you who's going to win between Quailing Aori and Jeffrey Molina. That's a real name. That's a good one. I like that one. Go, Gabe. I'm going to choose Quay Ling. Okay. Yeah, who do you have on this one? Well, I worry with Q Lang's affiliations, right? His first letter, A, Q and on, backwards. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on. Yeah. If you open open your mind here, it's his 21st fight. Subtract six letters from his name, 17 Q. Five seven, you get it. Mm-hmm. Sixty nine reach, gross. I'm going with <laughs> Molina. 
Felt good. I think that's <laughs> the most coherent uh, thought process we've ever had for a fight pick, if anything. So I think you're right on that. We're going we're to go to the next fight, though. This is a light heavyweight bout between Anthony Smith and Jimmy Crute. Kevin, you lead us off. Go. Crute's a pretty cool name, isn't it? By the way, and I'm I am picking him for the same reason I once upon a time picked Gabe Green. Abs. This is a clear one. Crute's obviously <laughs> shredded, ready to go, dancing in the moonlight with those things. Feel good, play good. Okay. All right. Uh, Gabe, who do you have on this? Uh, hey, Anthony Smith was the one where he, like, the guy broke into his house and he had to defend himself, right? And his yes. family. Like the night before the fight or after, not long after. Yeah, but he couldn't, if you recall. Like, didn't he call the police or something? That's I'm choosing crude too. Cause I'm like, I mean, even, I mean, don't get me wrong. When someone, when someone's like, it's like a fight for your life and you have like all that extra stuff dumping into your system and you don't know what's going on. Like, or he could have been on drugs and like, you, you're just kind of almost superhuman at that point. I just feel like I'd still be able to beat the shit out of somebody. So oh yeah, I'm going crude. <laughs> Definitely going crude. I, listen, I don't want ever want to take John Jones's side, but there was a point to be made when he said, you couldn't finish him. How the hell do you think you're going to be champion? And I go, it's a dick move, John. John Jones but, is like, I know a criminal, and I will tell you, <laughs> if you weren't able to fight him, I've done some feistier shit than that. So, so I, I will give him that much. But I would tell you this. I think you would be hard-pressed to hear one of those stories and go, Gabe Green just let the dude in his house get away. It was weird. Uh-oh. I'm pretty sure we'd hear some great footage of, like, Gabe going on all of the talk shows being like, yeah, man, um, yeah, that dude kind of, like, tried to steal my stuff and... Now he's going to have to buy a new face. But anyway, it was fun. Anyway, I'm a really nice guy. Yeah, that is pretty much what would happen. You know what sucks, though? Like, I don't know where Anthony Smith lives, but in, in California, you really can't mm -hmm. do anything when anybody comes into your house. It's so trash. It's like, I think if someone steals your TV, you basically got to let them leave with the TV unless they're uh, – like your life is on the line, unless your life is actually threatened. So like, unless, unless they're stealing the TV at knife or gunpoint, you can't really do anything to stop them because they can sue you. It's so stupid. Gabe, can I ask you a question here? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Why do you know this? Well, I mean, I just trying to protect myself in case mm -hmm. the situation rises, you know, I want to know what I'm supposed to do. I guess the secondary question is how good's your TV? Because you seem to have a very clear definition of specifically what happens to a TV. You well, no, I mean, my, my, I got I got an okay TV. It, it's <laughs> nothing to steal. That's for sure. <laughs> I believe the California laws, if they have a note, they are allowed to take your TV. Uh, anyway, California that's Penal Code 1985 PC explains that a person will be presumed to have a reasonable fear of imminent harm when someone unlawfully breaks into their home. And under multiple cases, uh, it appears, according to California's self-defense laws, it's really hard to be found guilty if someone breaks in your home and you are uh, found to have used self-defense. But you don't have yeah. stand your ground laws, which is basically you don't have carte blanche to murder the neighborhood kid. So that's yeah. pretty hard. No. But no. That's nah. just quick, quick I mean, research. Well, and mur murder would be a bit. But. Can my wife use a gun for self defense in California is another Googled question. And I want to know why that's in the top <laughs> 10. But that's a different <laughs> no. podcast. That is a different podcast. We'll come back to crime. The answer is yes, if you're not later. in L.A. So go on. <laughs> Next fight, Kevin, you are going to listen to Gabe Green tell us who is going to win with 23 seconds on the clock between Valentina Shevchenko and Jessica Andraj. Kevin, that, that's listen Shevchenko. to Gabe Green go. Shevchenko, Shevchenko is two beasts. And... Yeah, no. I don't, even, I don't think he's going to go the distance, Shevchenko. 
Interesting. Kevin, what do you got on this? I'm with him, and I'll tell you why. Because I have a parlay of Shevchenko <laughs> and another fighter on this card that just to win, and I got their odds, because currently Shevchenko's minus 400, meaning you have to bet yeah. a small farm to earn basically uh, Grubhub to go. This is not great odds, so I parlayed it with a little Usman, I'm team Shevchenko. And you know my thing with gun tattoos. If you're willing mm-hmm. to commit so much to guns that you get one life-size tattooed on your rib cage, I pick you to win fights. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, we're going to go to our next fight, welterweight bout. Alex Oliveira versus Randy Brown. Kevin, you start us off 15 on the clock for you. Yeah, I'm going with Randy Brown because of his last performance. And I feel like I'm going to have to die on the Oliveira's too old to be doing this hill. And I can't do that if I oh, keep no. uh, going back and he keeps like winning most of his fights. So I'm I'm going <laughs> to go with Brown here. Okay. Gabe, what do you got? I'm going with Brown, too. Brown, Brown keeps a pretty good pressure on people. And um, as long as he's not scared to commit, I think uh, Alex Oliveira gets gets a little like that's when he seems to have the problems when he can, uh, you know, just kind of be on the outside and do his shit. So yeah, I think Randy Brown's got that one too. That's what Randy Brown's girlfriend <laughs> said. If he could just commit, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> <laughs> So, Gabe, this is about the time when I like to tell the guest that there's usually some kind of wager between Kevin and the guest. Now, they're never financial because, you know, MMA life is kind of hard, pandemic, all these things. Plus, not as fun as nonsensical bets. Kevin, what are some kind of nonsensical bets that have happened on the show in the past? Oh, well, there's been some good ones lately because we've been talking to a lot of fighters. So Joe Selecki owes me. Um, he has to put thought into which ABC show he should get to cameo on for beating up Jim Miller. Uh, so he just owes us a little 30 second ad spot for that. Kai Kamaka and I both have had to drink White Claws and explain. We tied, so we lost a bet about having to explain because um, for some reason he bet White Claws. I don't exactly remember why. It was a weird one. And yeah. Dan Martinez had to crush five natties uh, because he was mocking the fact that I was drinking natural lights while I crushed him in picking UFC picks. So it's like a promo for the show or you because um, I've lost recently. I had to make dick cookies. Uh, who did I have to make dick cookies for? Tony Burchak. And oh, I got to tell you, Kev, right. I will be putting that up this week because Tony. I think you can use it um, after a performance this weekend. So we're going to lift his spirits by releasing the you eating dick cookies because you lost a bet to him. So, yes. Anyway. I, I also made them just so we know. I mean, I, it wasn't you, like you did. I know, I dick know. cookies. Cool. It was, a, it was a very, very fun process. So, Gabe they're not all drinking ones. They can be as nonsensical. They could also be t-shirt exchanges. They're usually social media involved in some way. So without saying what it is, if you do have one in mind, do you have a bet in mind? Uh, I have, I have no bet in mind whatsoever. However, here's some good news. Go ahead. Um, the bet, how soon would the bet have to take place after the fight card? Mm, we're flexible so it doesn't have to be a you destroying your body say if you're in a fight camp wink so it's not the issue but yeah you you might have a little bit of time we can negotiate those things afterwards yeah because i mean I'm, I'm stuck in jersey for 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 30 uh, to the 30th, and, and I really can't do anything uh, besides go to oh, the gym. No, no. And that makes the sense. Room. So I'm, and no. I'm, I'm too limited to the things I can do in general. No, no, that makes sense. And we wouldn't really force you to be like, well, break out of that COVID jail <laughs> and bubble. risk it That's all for something. Get out of the bubble. <laughs> No, 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 no. We we would, of course, accommodate whatever you got to do. So I wouldn't worry about that. But what I will tell you is we've got four more fights. So you got a little bit of time to think about it. First, tell me, 
to a bow between Dwight Grant and go ahead, Keith. Oh, you were starting to break up a little bit, but you're back. Excellent. Uh, who's going to win a fight in the welterweight division between Dwight Grant and Stefan Sekulik? Mm, that's about as good as it's going to get. I'm going Dwight Grant. Is there any other reason other than you kind of recognize his name and it actually is a real name? No, no, no. It's um, uh, I'm just going back to his fight with D-Rod. Like, he had D-Rod really hurt and then pretty fast. He ended up getting knocked out, but that's because he blew his, his wad. It wasn't so much because he got, like, outclassed. He just tried to finish somebody and didn't do it super efficiently. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go Dwight Grant. I feel like, you know, sometimes he probably learned a little bit since then. And, um, yeah, Dwight Grant, that, that's the guy who's going to win. I got that. Kevin, who do you have? What if I told you a Serbian southpaw could make history in the welterweight division this Saturday, Raf, avenging a loss back to getting people on the ground, which he's going to do. But I have a proclivity towards loving guillotiners. I love them. I call them guillotiners. We have a little texting club. And Sukiuk is a guillotiner, Raf. I'm going with him mm-hmm. for the big, what we call in the business, the Serbian upset. Though I am quite worried because Grant is a heavy favorite and um, really looking pretty badass lately. Well, I think we've learned a lot in that short amount of time. We're going to go to next, a fight that I can't wait to butcher the names on. So I'm actually going to prepare you all for this one. It's my favorite names on the card thus far. It's a bantamweight bout between Dana Batgirl and Kevin Felice Navidad. Kevin, who wins that one? There's absolutely no way it's Batgirl versus Navidad. (laughs) Uh, Because again, they have these switched on it. So I'm now seeing, but I am, I am going to, despite the fact that, you know, there's a Kevin thing, I'm going with mm-hmm. Dana because you know, we're better at talking, less at fighting, I've noticed. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. All right. Let's go to this one. Gabe, who do you have on this one? Don't do you have deny Dana me, man. Don't deny me. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going Kevin. I think Kevin's got this one. Uh, maybe not so much as picks, but he's going to win this fight. You know, all this other Kevin's going to do that. You know, <laughs> Kevin. More belief in a different I, Kevin, not this Kevin here. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Ke- Kevin Navidad. You know, it's like, yeah, Navidad. That's, I that's, will that's, say. That's, oh, is his? Hold on, his nickname, y'all. Quicksand mm-hmm. fights out of Arizona. Uh, I'm back in. That's badass. Oh no. Yeah. So who are you still for? Are you still going for Dana or are you going for Kevin? No, I'm going to continue with Don't Dana Me, but I love Quicksand okay. as a nickname for a fighter. Just cool. I will tell you that Dana's name is spelled, in my mind, how I believe Arnold Schwarzenegger refers to Dana White. Dana. So every time <laughs> I see that, Dana. That's so helpful for that. my right. Arnold. <laughs> Featherweight bout. Patrick Sabatini versus Tristan Connolly. Gabe, you start us off. 15 on the clock for you. I'm going to go Sabatini. I'm going, I'm going Sabatini. Interesting. Any particular reason why? You just kind of feeling that one? Yeah, I'm not super familiar. I wasn't super familiar with these guys uh, before the fight uh, or before you told me I was to pick these are picks but i looked them up and uh i was like i'm just feeling what pat's working with man i i, I think he's got this one all right kevin what do you got for us 15 for you I'll tell you something about our man gabe here his first two fights were on something called get down promotions which is yeah. basically the same people i think who made boogie nights the porn part of that mark Wahlberg movie get down product promotions is i'm saying a suspect organization I think there's some nefarious things going on. I checked Gabe's record in those amateur years. He can't be trusted either. Not associated with a place like Get Down Promotions. I am clearly going to – I'm going to agree with him, Sabatini. I just wanted to try and uh, 
demote uh, his merits oh, along the way. That, yeah. Uh, Kev, you don't know the California circuit quite like we do out here. They can come up with some names. The CXF organization, now known as Lights Out, at one point referred to the subtitle of one of their events as the Meryl Streep Showcase. So, you know, we've seen some names happen out here. Well, he also was in Crossfighters Locked and Loaded. So you tell me. That's fair. Yep, absolutely. I have covered a number of these, too. All right, gents. I'm excited about this. It's a rematch that really nobody asked for, but here we are. It is a rematch in the championship division of the welterweight category between Kamaru Usman and Jorge Masvidal. Kevin, 30 seconds for you. Who's winning this? This is the second leg of my parlay. It's Usman. Um, Again, I actually got him at minus 400. He's now minus 420. So the odds got a little better, and I got to save 420, which is also happening very soon. I'm curious. Well, first, I'm not going to presume that the gifted will agree with me, but if he does, I'm really curious if anyone thinks there's like even a path for Jorge here. I do not believe there is. There's always a punch, but against somebody who's, you know. Older than me. Kind of and you know what? I don't want to lead. I'm not leading the witness. Let's go over to the fighter on the show, Gabe Green. Gabe, yeah. who do you have on this? So uh, I'm also going to go Usman. It's like I really don't want to, um, but like I, you know, like I feel the same way. I, I'm I'm kind of rooting for for Masvidal on this one. However, not particularly because I'm a fan of Masvidal. But just because I don't want Usman to be the champ anymore, um, but he's he's really good at what he does, and so I I, I think Usman's gonna win this one for sure. It's just you know yeah. it is what it is. It's just tough. I think that Usman is really good at neutralizing. The last fight with Burns, he had a great jab, which, ouch. Then you look at some of his other highlights. He can neutralize with the wrestling, which I think is probably going to be very similar to what we might see in this one. So if you're coaching Masvidal, though, Gabe, are there any corrections that you see that he can make? Because that's what he's good at. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, well, mm, I would say this. Uh, (laughs) The nicest part of this whole situation is I feel like in a very strange alternate universe – you are the nice version of a Masvidal for us right now. Like, no street Jesus nonsense, just you being the nicest guy in the world. As opposed to Masvidal trying to talk shit and being like, yeah, well, yeah, he beat me, but what if I have a full camp? Dude, weren't you kind of training this whole time in secret behind? No, no, no. I was I was surprised I was going to be asked to fight. <sighs> this came as a shock. Like, no, dude, you were completely prepping for this one. Um, I would say this, though. If Masvidal does win, it throws an interesting wrench into that whole division. So, in that regard, not even shit-talking Usman, it's just, if he won, all of us would look at that division like, uh uh-oh, there are a lot of guys who could very easily make a case they should be next in line. So, I guess we'll see. Gabe, it seems like you and Kevin have picked some people who are very similar. So in the event that you tie on those picks, we ask for you to give us a prediction on a tiebreaker of fight of the night and two performances of the night. So of the fighters, who do you think are two people who would likely get performances of the night and one fight of the night as a tiebreaker? I'll start off with you, sir. Oh, with with me. Uh, I think fight of the night is going to be Zang versus Rose. Okay. And, Two performances of the night, sir. I hate when uh, the the I kind of hate it personally when the like main event people who are getting paid more than all like the undercard people get uh, these bonuses because we really don't get paid shit. But I feel like Shevchenko versus Andrade is going to be a performance of the night for sure. And then let's see, let's see. I'm going to go with 
I'm going to go with my boy, Randy Brown. Randy Brown coming in in clutch moments. Kevin, who? I have, because as our illustrious guest has pointed out, I have Uriah Hall. I have Shevchenko as performance of the night bonusers, because I think Uriah is going to separate Weidman from Weidman. And then Usman Masvidal, fight of the night, but I'm jealous of his Zhang Rose call. I think that was better, but I'd already written mine down. Yeah, Damn no, it, no, it, it is it. much better, yeah. So, yeah, I, no. I like this is a, anyway, I feel good about it. It's the right choice. So we gave you some time to think about it here, Gabe. Did a bet suddenly emerge in your head? We always defer to the guest first. Uh, you know what? Not, not really. I have uh, no idea what to do for a bet. Don't worry about that. Now I'm going to give it to the real creative genius of the show. Kevin, do you have any ideas? Yeah. I've never been named a part of the gifted list. Raph, I demand to be a member of the gifted Gabe Breen Honor Society. And I, he doesn't have to do a video. He's busy. The man's got stuff to do. Just a little social media post. Just uh, I'd like to announce I've accepted Kevin from Verbal Tap as a member of the, you know, Gabe gifted crew. And I think that's it. And if I lose, we'll do a little video uh, to highlight his next fights coming out, uh, where I admit he's the most gifted. The yeah, you, I, I like a video of you saying why he's so gifted. I think that would be pretty good. I've got some ideas. Okay. Okay. Actually invented Gabe, Tesla. Gabe, does that seem... <laughs> created Gabe, Joe Rogan's that weird like podcast a, room. No, don't give them oh, away okay. yet. No, don't give them away. Not, not for free. It's just like him with birthdays on television. Gabe, does this seem like a fair bet trade for you? Yeah, I yeah, am. I'm, I'm I'm in. This is this is good. Let's do it. Okay, that was the easiest endorsement I think we've gotten out of him so far. It's like, yeah, I mean, uh, I think I could do that. Hell, I could probably even do that from the comfort of my bubble here. So, Gabe, here's kind of how we do this: we all go watch the fights, but we always invite the guest if they're willing and they're available to come back next week. Would you be interested to come back and talk the fights with us next week, sir? Uh, like during the while the fights are happening? No, no, or no. Post. We all have lives, like oh. we'll, like this, where it's after. Oh, just talk about the fights afterwards. Yeah, I mean, just uh, let let me know what day, as long as it works. Uh, with I'm pretty <laughs> not busy. Like I mean, I'm training in the day, but as long as it's later like this, it works perfectly. I will say I will miss this the most about quarantine times, which is that we know where the fighters are. So it's usually pretty easy to be like, I know you're not doing shit. You got an hour to talk. To us. <laughs> Come on. So, uh, no, dude, we'd love to have you back on. Plus, it's going to be a great opportunity for you to break down some of the fights with us in ways that Kevin and I were not as talented as you. So I think it would be good to have a fighter tell us why it is that Shevchenko did Shevchenko things next week. Because, holy shit, I think we're all expecting her to do something pretty impressive over the weekend. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Because, I mean, Rose was destroying Andrade, and I think Shevchenko's a better striker for sure. So that's going to be special. Absolutely. Well, let's do this. Gabe, where can the people find you if they are looking for you? Where can the people see you and all of your, I guess, gym selfies that are happening right now and gym videos that you've got going on or just to be <laughs> jealous of your apps that you have right now. Hey, you know what? Uh, um, what did they say? If there's no gym selfie, you didn't go. So like, that's, yeah. I'm just letting everyone know I went and I'm staying, I have, I'm doing my due diligence. And even though I'm stuck in a hotel room, I'm getting my, it feels like yard time, really. Like I'm in jail and I'm getting that, like, <laughs> my hour to go out and play just move around yeah. um yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's uh i made it super easy it's a gifted gabe green on everything twitter instagram facebook uh <laughs> i made a tiktok my tiktok is trash though i don't know how to do any dances um <laughs> yeah <laughs> everything across the board gift i gifted gabe green so you, you find me there okay. or i mean you just come to jersey and um, there's a parking lot right outside my window i can't go down there but you can totally wave to me if you're in new jersey so that's cool 
Do not do that. It's a trick. You will get murdered. If you go to some parking lot in New Jersey just looking for people in the top floors, it happened to me a few years it's ago. Like, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm looking at it right now. There's a nice little Ferris wheel in the back. There's this one ride that's like, it seems like they just kind of screenshot people side to side. It looks semi dangerous. However, also a lot of fun. Um, I've never, I haven't seen anyone like break off into the ocean yet. Um, but you know, I'm here for another two weeks, so we'll see. And then, um, yeah, it's giant parking structure, which, which is, there's like, there's no one, there's not even one car parked on top. So yeah, plenty of room to just run by if someone wants to stay high. I will tell you this, this does sound like it would belong in a true crime podcast where they go back and talk about, well, this fighter just said, come to this empty parking lot. Don't worry. It's in Jersey. Whatever goes wrong there. Also, you can wave at me and nothing bad will happen to you. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I, mm-hmm. I will be looking out the window and I, of course I can't run down there cause I'm in the bubble. You know, there's no, you can't even get out of the bubble to save people's lives. It's a pretty, <laughs> pretty fierce bubble. You can't get out of. However, I mean, I can call the cops. You know, they'll get there eventually. So, yeah. <laughs> no one used that in the I NBA do. bubble. No one was like, oh, I was just trying to save this young woman's life. She fell. I was nervous. I went down there. That would have been a good idea. It's more clever. Yo, Kev, if you really think about strippers in the bubble, that's the way to do it. Just have them show up and be like, yo, we want some strippers. We're socially distanced. I'm just tossing my money from atop my balcony. <laughs> <laughs> Saying modern <laughs> problems require modern solutions. Gabe, we appreciate you. We look forward to having you back on the show. Yeah, man. Just let me. Yeah, let me know about uh, the the recap, and I'm down. Awesome. And we are. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is...